Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh um, Kita proceed uh, Habiskan chapter 7 uh, Because before this Saya cuma explain uh, Dua objektif makroekonomik Iaitu full employment and price stability So that you can do your assignment So I'll proceed with economic growth Equilibrium in international trade Dan juga equitable distribution of income Okay So what about economic growth uh, To achieve economic growth Uh a country must increase the level of output output ni maksudnya penghasilan good and services within a country dia bukan semata-mata boleh uh, diukur dengan uh, jumlah pendapatan negara tersebut, kalau nak tahu negara tu ada pembangunan atau tak dia lebih kepada uh, kita tengok whether the country is able to utilize the four resources within the country uh, uh, yang comprises of land, labor, capital, entrepreneur tu kan so these four resources I already told you very essential for a country ada banyak tak guna yang penting dia mesti gunakan dia dengan sebaik mungkin to produce goods and services to fulfill their human's wants with the production of goods and services with that barulah the apa the country can cultivate income and at the same time will result to economic growth okay a growing economy is a situation whereby the economy experience an increase in national income over a period of time so macam mana negara dapat pendapatan adalah dengan cara penghasilan barangan menggunakan resource yang ada so nak dapatkan economic growth they must fulfill the first objective dulu full employment make sure all the factors of production land labor capital entrepreneur are being used efficiently to produce goods Okay, the production level of a country should increase year by year itu menunjukkan bahawa negara itu utilizing their resources a growing economy means there will be more production uh, so, okay, for example kan, you tengok 2018-2019 tahun lepas uh, overall overview uh, Malaysia berhasilkan 1 juta barangan 2019 Malaysia berhasilkan 1.5 juta maksudnya ada peningkatan 500 ribu barangan yang dihasilkan ha, itu adalah menunjukkan Malaysia is being efficient menjadi lebih baik because we are able to utilize our resources and we are producing more compared to last year more production and then bila kita berhasilkan barang kita akan menggunakan more worker that's why kita akan ada high employment and bila people had ada pekerjaan they will have income when they have income they will spend their income and that will contribute to the income of the country and the country will have high income economy is measured by aggregate output but tak kita nak measure economic growth ni adalah menggunakan indikasi penghasilan barangan dalam negara dan juga unemployment rate kadar pengangguran negara kalau negara ada sedikit kadar pengangguran kadar pengangguran yang rendah it shows that the country is using their labor to produce output maksudnya ada growth lah tu ok, however economic growth does not move constantly but rather will experience short terms up and down called business cycle uh, so economic growth ni dia tak sentiasa naik je for example 2015 naik 2016 lagi naik 2017 lagi naik tak dia tak uh, a trend upward je tak dia ada ups and down yang kita panggil dia sebagai business cycle dalam business cycle ni ada four phases yang kita panggil sebagai peak recession through dan juga recovery so saya dah buat illustration business cycle uh, so this is business cycle ok uh, up and down of the economy naik turun economy naik, turun, naik turun, naik ha, so ekonomi akan sentiasa ada naik turun dia, ok so bila di atas sekali, maksudnya itu peak, uh, maksudnya masa tu, apa yang berlaku pada country, dia uh, ak, uh, meng, mengalami economic boom, uh, dia ada economic boom meaning that the country is performing very well Uh, so this is what we have here we have economic boom it's good because this is what we 
what to uh, obtain. Dekat ekonomi boom ni, apa yang ada? Kita ada full employment. Kita berjaya capai objektif yang pertama iaitu we are able to utilize the four factors of production, land, labor, capital, entrepreneur. Full employment berlaku masa tu, the first one. Land, labor, capital, entrepreneurs are being utilized efficiently to produce good. Okay, so it's good. Ini adalah yang target sesebuah negara is to reach peak so that we have economic boom. Uh, okay, the problem is Okay, bila ada full employment, meaning that everybody is working, so kita akan ada isu people has too much money here. No, ini masalah dia. People has too much money. So, apa, apa, apa masalah dengan ada duit yang sangat banyak? Ada masalah. Because when people has too much money, in terms of the demand and supply, there will be a change. Okay? So, say draw. Okay. This is our part C, X and Y. Okay, right, and then, oh, saya copy paste je, senang saya nak letak, okay, kat sini, kita ada GPL, General Price Level, yang saya explain pasal inflation tu, okay, lepas tu, kat sini, kita ada Output Ok Ataupun simbol dia Quantity ataupun Q Ataupun Y ha. Ok And in the economy Ada dua golongan Which is Kalau downward sloping ni Dia lama uh, uh, The aggregate demand curve Okay. I'm not sure whether Kenapa dia naik ke atas selalu tu It's okay Okay Aggregate demand I already told you Bila kita masuk makro Kita tak panggil demand curve Kita akan panggil dia aggregate demand Because this is the demand That represent uh, The entire demand of the economy Aggregate demand curve Okay And then We have another one Which is uh, Semua naik ke atas I'm not sure what happened there A S Are you get supply curve Okay So this is the situation in the economy And here we will get Equilibrium Okay We'll have equilibrium here So the thing is What happened here Kita akan ada Kat sini GPL Kita akan dapat harga In general price level Yang yeah, equilibrium So kita buat dia adalah zero Sebab dia asal punya Okay Harga get demand zero Alright, so satu lagi kita ada uh, 
output 0 ok so here I'm not sure the my adjustment skills is a bit off. So okay, as long as you boleh nampak, okay, okay, so okay lah. Okay, lagi saya just lagi dia tak masuk. Okay, uh, the thing is, guys. Ini adalah normal situation Tapi bila kita dah achieve big People has too much money Okay This will result an issue Kenapa? Dia akan berkaitan dengan aggregate demand Sebab People is the buyer Okay Too much money meaning that There will be demand They will demand more goods So aggregate demand curve Dia akan start shifting Like a shift. So, when the aggregate demand curve shift, the equilibrium will change. It's not here. Sekarang ni, we will have a new equilibrium. Dekat atas sana ni. Dekat sini. So, this one is equilibrium. So, you buat E eh. E0. Okay. This is the old equilibrium associated with AD0. Okay, now the equilibrium change here. Kat silang kat sini. Kepada E1. Associate with AD1. So, bila ada perubahan AD Equilibrium yang baru So, what happened there? We will have a new price Above that ah. So, this new price Is price equilibrium But, it's higher So, apa yang bermaksud higher tu? We have the problem of Inflation So here kita akan ada harga yang baru iaitu GPL 1 The price is higher ha, Harga meningkat So with the higher price The country is facing a new problem which is inflation So, bila bila inflation eh, bila AD ni tak stop people bila dia ada too much money they will keep purchasing AD akan still increase lagi increase lagi inflation rate akan makin tinggi makin tinggi makin tinggi, makin tinggi. so what happen here kita akan ada issue iaitu inflation rate is too high So even though we are happy because we have economic boom, economy is prospering, tapi kita tak suka sebab bila inflation is too high, the cost of living in the country is very expensive. So to live in that country, you must have money. Everything is expensive. Even nak mati pun mahal. Ah, 
this is what happened in the high income country lah uh, pernah ada kes lah dekat Jepun uh, bapa dia meninggal lepas tu anaknya tak mampu nak kebumikan bapa dia dia simpan dalam rumah dia pasal yang uh, apa tu macam kebian tu uh, yang colok dia tu uh, dan dia biarkan bapa dia uh, macam tu sampai mereput dan uh, satu hari tu dia lupa dan jiran bau busuk jiran report uh, lepas tu baru polis datang and then bila tanya kenapa dia kata because he cannot afford to pay for the funeral of his father uh, it's very expensive living in that country so maybe uh, some some person tak ada isu sebab dia high income people kan dia banyak gaji gaji dia tinggi tak ada masalah tapi kita kena ingat tu entire population that, uh, doesn't comprise of those yang high income je kita ada macam-macam jenis orang kan so kerajaan kena alert about this lah so this is a problem lah Walaupun uh, actually we love this because the country is performing tapi kita ada problem of inf- high inflation rate. So when this happen, the government will do something. The government will decrease the economy. Now, even though kita memang look forward to rich peak tapi uh, dia menyebabkan rakyat kita susah. Cost of living dalam negara tu mahal. So kerajaan akan turun ke ekonomi. So dalam proses daripada peak kepada true ni menurunkan ekonomi ni, harap panah ni itulah yang kita panggil sebagai recession, kemelesetan ekonomi uh, so apa yang kerajaan buat biasanya untuk turunkan ekonomi, problem dia bermula dekat people has too much money so what should we, uh, the government do, government will take back the money macam mana? impose tax uh, dia akan kena cukai yang tinggi so masa ni, to solve the problem, tax rate for the people will be very expensive and government akan reduce government spending. Maksudnya dari segi subsidi semua tu, kerajaan akan kurangkan. So, bila tak ada subsidi and so on, barang-barang akan jadi makin mahal. People akan lagi susah untuk berbelanja. Ha, tu cara gov- government tarik balik duit people. Ha, bila bila dah kerajaan dah buat macam tu, people has less money, they don't spend. Okay. Tak ada demand of goods. What happen? On the way turun kepada recession ni, daripada peak kepada true ni, dalam recession process tu, kita akan ada isu baru. Kenapa? Because people don't have money, because people pay tax to the government, uh, the government take back all the subsidies, all the specialties that government bagi kepada rakyat. And they don't demand goods. Bila tak ada permintaan terhadap barang kan, the producer won't produce good. If we don't produce good, then that, the producer will not need labor. Ah, so, the, uh, the drawbacks is, kita nak turunkan inflation rate, bila kita turun daripada peak kepada true, kita akan menyebabkan isu baru yang muncul, iaitu unemployment. Kadang pengangguran akan start meningkat. Sebab sekarang ni, bila orang tak demand barang, tak ada penghasilan barang, tak akan memerlukan labor. So, until we reach true. Ah, so, dekat true ni, apa isu dia? Ha, isu true ni adalah terbalik. Dia adalah economic down. Eh, sorry. Economic down. Okay. So, here kita akan ada masalah. Bukan full employment dah. Kita akan ada isu high unemployment. Uh, Masa ni ramai lah yang mengangguh. And the problem is, not people has too much money, people don't have money. Mm, uh, people have less money lah. People have no money lah. Uh, senang. Okay. So here what happened high high untuk inflation rate dia akan jadi low. Uh, sebab kita dah turun ke ekonomi kan. Ah uh, masa ni masa kita turun daripada recession kepada uh, daripada peak kepada true ni kita akan berlaku recession dalam proses recession ni kita ada kita tukar kita tukar sebab kita nak turunkan inflation rate inflation rate akan turun bila sampai bawah ni inflation rate akan jadi low. 
Tapi problem baru bergula ke atas ni tak ada uh, uh, employment, unemployment kan? Uh, problem baru bergula dekat sini kita akan ada masalah unemployment rate. Uh, so, itu isu yang kena address lah. Okay. Alright. And then, kat sini pun it's not good. Siapa suka economic down kan? It's not good. Why? Bila economic down, dia menunjukkan bahawa the country is not performing. The country is not using the resources efficiently sebab tu dah ada unemployment. Labor ramai tapi kita tak bagi pekerjaan pada labor. Labor don't have work. So, bila labor don't have work, they don't have money. They don't have money, they don't purchase. Macam mana ekonomi nak jalan? Sebab the, uh, bila tak ada demand of goods and services, the producer won't produce good. Tak produce good, tak adalah penggunaan land labor capital entrepreneur. So, this is a problem. Even though kita tak ada masalah inflation, inflation is slow, tapi kita ada high unemployment. And I already mentioned before, bila in the country, unemployment rate dia terlampau tinggi, dia menunjukkan bahawa negara tu tak capable menjadikan peluang pekerjaan pada rakyat. And then, what happen? The people yang don't have employment, they can do whatever possible to get money, to sustain their living. So, masa ni crime rate akan tinggi. And illegal activities akan sangat banyak. Huh. So, uh, uh, apa? Kita boleh tengok jual beli dadah, uh, uh, weapon, illegal activities. Uh, kalau uh, perempuan tu, maybe resolve to prostitution to get money. Uh, some country, prostitution tu kadang-kadang tu dia uh, legal, legal activity. Uh, for example, in India. Sebab apa? This is, that is the only way, the only means for the the women there to get money. Because the husband cannot get job. So, uh, the wife is the one who sustain the living. And the only job they can do is being a prostitute. Oh, pelacu. Okay, kita tak adalah tahap macam tu kan negara kita kan. Alhamdulillah lah. Okay, so true is not good. Because bila negara ramai, orang mengganggu, kerajaan kena keluarkan banyak duit. Sebab crime rate bila dah tinggi, kita kena tangkap uh, penjenayah semua tu masukkan penjara, kita nak bagi makan kat dia orang semua tu kan. Kos lagi. Kos akan meningkat for the country. And then, kerajaan kena bagi duit kebajikan masyarakat. So, nak nak sustain the living of the people inside the country lah. So, kerajaan akan buat something. Tak boleh biarkan negara it terus down. Uh, okay. So, daripada true ni, kerajaan akan buat something, tingkat kembali ekonomi. Anak panah naik ke atas, pergi kepada peak balik. Okay, so inilah yang kita panggil sebagai recovery, pemulihan ekonomi. So dia terbalik. Kalau recession tadi, kita kenakan cukai sebab kita nak ambil duit rakyat kan. Best tu much money. Kita tinggikan cukai, kita potong subsidi dan so on. Jangan bagi bantuan kepada rakyat sebab rakyat dah banyak duit. Kalau tak, makin teruk problem ni kan. Ha. So for here, People has no money, what should we do in order to help people so that they have money, they can spend and bila dia ada demand barangan, barulah ada permintaan terhadap labor kan, baru ada uh, 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 employment opportunity. So, the government will cut the tax rate. Nah, dia tak akan kena cukai ataupun kurangkan kadar cukai. And then, government will start to give money to the people. Nah, bagi duit beri, duit kebajikan masyarakat, macam-macam duit bantuan. So that people will have money. With that money, the economy will start to recover. And then we reach peak again. And this problem occur again. And then going to true balik. Uh, so this process will keep repeating. Tapi tak adalah pening. Tahun 2018 kat peak. Tahun 2019 kat true. Lepas tu kat peak balik. Tak. Uh, dia, kalau kita nak naik daripada true kepada peak ni, it takes forever. Kadang-kadang tu 20 tahun pun belum tentu kita uh, 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 boleh achieve peak. Uh, Malaysia, never. Kita tak pernah lagi. Masa 2020 kita adalah untuk mencari, uh, mendapat peak. Menjadi negara yang pendapatan high income. Tapi sampai sekarang kita tak berjaya fulfill lagi lah. Uh, so, with that, what happened to Malaysia? We are trying to go there. Tapi kita sedia seundur balik ke belakang. Tapi kalau nak turun, daripada peak ke true ni, memang boleh dalam masa sehari beres. Uh, for example, what happened these days lah, due to coronavirus, many business shut down, okay, the economy is not performing uh, because of the restriction, and that 
because of uh, the, the 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 business cannot produce goods uh, 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 apa tak ada utilization of factors of production the economics will start going to go to through ha benda ni sekejap kalau nak turun daripada atas ke bawah sekejap sangat tapi kalau kita nak naik daripada bawah ke atas it will take forever so tidak bermaksud dia akan berlaku every year ha, so hopefully you faham lah ok so apa yang berlaku kat sini kita panggil dia trade off effect ok uh, I think I will draw here ok inflation unemployment ok insert below set below set below ok inflation dengan unemployment ni dia ada trade off effect Sebab AS saya termasuk dalam tu So I'll adjust my AS lah ah. Okay, if you are going for zero inflation, kita tak nak zero percent inflation. Maksudnya kita dapat di sini ya. Very high inflation, kita tak nak inflation. Meaning that we are trying to go from peak to true. Kita menyebabkan negara kita akan mengalami masalah recession. So apa yang berlaku pada negara kalau kita nak zero percent inflation, which is low rate inflation, we will have a high rate of unemployment, eight percent unemployment. I cannot find the percentage. Okay. But, if you are going for high rate, uh, sorry, 0% unemployment, tak nak langsung unemployment, 0%. Maksudnya, no unemployment kat sini lah, full employment lah, no unemployment. So, kita akan ada masalah high inflation rate. Inflation masa tu akan jadi 8%. So this is not good because this is very high and tak, tak elok sebab inflation rate terlalu tinggi kalau kita target nak kosong tak nak langsung menganggur kita akan ada masalah inflation sangat tinggi kalau kita tak nak langsung inflation kita akan ada dekat perkara pengangguran yang sangat tinggi so the best for a country it is, is to make it balance 4% inflation and 4% eh sorry 4% unemployment nah, sebab itulah kalau kita tengok in the slide dia beritahu Unemployment rate below 4% is considered full employment. Price stability, inflation is mentioned based on the objective of the country is to keep inflation rate below 4%. Nampak tak? Kenapa dia 4% to unemployment? Sorry, full employment and 4% for price stability. It's because both are the trade of effect. The best is here. Ah, make sure it's balanced between inflation and unemployment. Kita kena go for the extreme. Kita, kalau kita nak langsung inflation, kita akan ada pengangguran yang tinggi dalam negara. Kalau kita tak nak langsung unemployment, kita akan ada masalah inflation yang sangat tinggi dalam negara. Sebab both ni adalah isu besar untuk the country. Masalah besar sesebuah negara. Inflation dan juga unemployment. This is a very big issue for every country in the world. Sebab tu assignment kita pasal inflation dengan unemployment. You need to story about the inflation and unemployment of a country. Okay, so hopefully you faham lah. Alright, so let's proceed. So, inflation can reduce, eh, sorry, for economic growth. And then, high growth rate means people will be better off. Of course, kita suka negara ada growth rate. Tapi jangan terlampau, melampau sangat sampai masa tu inflation terlampau tinggi. Dan menyebabkan rakyat kita hidup susah. Because cost of living dalam negara tu sangat mahal. Uh, tapi kalau slow or stagnant growth maksudnya masih dekat peak, uh, dekat true lah dekat bahagian bawah tadi uh, kat sini lah slow or stagnant growth ni high high growth kat sini uh, kalau slow slow or stagnant growth kat sini uh, 
causes a decrease in income of a country and high unemployment rate. Okay, so this is the objective of our third objective, which is economic growth. And let's go for the fourth objective, equilibrium in international trade. Okay, international trade, bila kita sebut je international trade, dia akan ada kaitan dengan export dan import. So, hopefully you boleh bezakan apakah export, apakah import. So, international trade are activities involving in buying goods. Kalau kita beli barang daripada luar negara, kita panggil dia sebagai import. Okay, so import nanti saya akan sedia sepakai M sebagai representative dia. Ha. Kenapa? Sebab dalam ejaan import ada M. So, nanti short form untuk import adalah M. Import bermaksud we are buying good from outside. For example, uh, kita import uh, uh, apa? Import uh, engine creator daripada Jerman. Uh, import, buy buy goods from outside. And selling good to the other country. Uh, selling, bila kita jual barang kita ke luar negara, itu kita panggil sebagai export. Dan simbol dia adalah X. Uh, kenapa? Sebab dalam ejaan dia ada X. Uh, so, afterwards, uh, bila saya sebut M tu, bila that I'm implying import, bila saya sebut X, I'm implying export. Export to the other countries. Okay, so this will result to a greater amount of outflow and inflow of a currency. Uh, so, macam uh, outflow ni maksudnya duit keluar. Maksudnya bila duit kita akan keluar? Bila kita import. Betul tak? When we buy product from outside, we buy product from Germany. So, the product of course coming to our country, tapi kita must pay them. Maksudnya, duit akan mengalir keluar ke negara diorang. Uh, outflow is import. So, actually, we don't like, we dislike import. Why? Because the money will go to other country. Dia akan manfaatkan negara dari. Dia akan jadi income for other country, not our country. Kalau inflow pula, bermaksud kita dapat duit. Masa bila kita akan dapat duit? Bila kita export barang kita ke luar negara. For example, Malaysia pengeluar barang uh, kelapa sawit terbesar di Asia Tenggara. So, Malaysia, uh, when we sell our uh, apa palm oil, kita akan dapat money, inflow of money. Ha. So, apa yang kita nak adalah sebenarnya inflow instead of outflow. Kalau outflow tu, duit keluar dia akan menguntungkan negara luar. Kalau inflow tu, duit tu akan mengalir masuk ke negara kita, dia akan menjadi income of our country. Okay, and this akan direkod dalam account yang kita namakan sebagai balance of payment. Ha, nama short form dia BOP, balance of payment account. Kenapa ada separate account untuk rekod pasal export dengan import? Kenapa? Because export and import ni sahaja nilai dia adalah sangat besar. Billion, trillion. Because export and import will involve the cost of uh, the transportation cost, cargo, flight, semua tu. So, bila kita nak hantar something, dah ala-ala ni mahal, kita tak akan hantar dengan kuantiti yang sedikit. Ia akan melibatkan jumlah yang besar. So, bila jumlah ni sangat besar, kita tak boleh uh, campurkan dia dengan uh, the figure of uh, of goods in our country. Kalau tak, orang kata dia akan jadi very confusing. That's why kita ada satu account separate yang kita cuba record pasal export dengan import sahaja. Itu yang kita panggil sebagai account balance of payment. Ha. So, objektif kita adalah, objektif makro kita adalah untuk dapatkan equilibrium dalam export dan import negara. Means at least our export must equals to our import. So that our BOP is balanced. Oh. Even though I already told you, saya kata, terbaik is inflow lah. Kita nak jual barang tau. Supaya duit kita mas duit masuk ke dalam tempat kita kan. Tapi, okay, kita tak boleh export sahaja tanpa import. Ha. Kenapa pentingnya barang daripada luar negara? Because we are not producing everything. Uh, we cannot be self-sufficient. Cukup untuk apa yang kita hasilkan inside our country je. No. It's not enough for us. Especially, we are very lacking in terms of technology. 
without the technology from the outsider, from other country, kita akan very mundur. For example, handphone. Uh, sampai sekarang, even though ada pernah percubaan untuk menghasilkan handphone buatan Malaysia, tapi tak pernah laku, tak pernah boleh bertahan lama. Uh, kita kalau tak ada export and import, kita tak import beli barang uh, beli daripada luar, awak sekarang tak pakai pun handphone. Semua pakai public phone, pakai burung berpati agaknya nak hantar surat cinta, hantar ke orang lain, sampai ke orang lain. Uh, so, it's very troubling for us right ah uh, jangan ingat pasal benda yang BTB kalau tak ada es, eh, tak ada import kita tak boleh makan kiwi tak apa tak makan kiwi tak mati pun it's okay tapi in terms of technology kalau banyak kalau kita tak import we would have the technology we will be very lacking bukan dari segi phone saja in terms of car kita hasilkan kereta of course kita ada proton dan pro2 kan right tapi kita cuma capable menghasilkan badan kereta. Kita tak mampu menghasilkan uh, engine di kereta. Sampai sekarang, we don't have the ability to produce our own engine. Oh, so, bila kita tak boleh nak hasilkan uh, our own engine, walaupun kita hasilkan badan kereta, boleh ke kereta kita bergerak? Cannot, right? So, then we need them. Oh, banyak benda yang kita perlukan daripada orang. Okay? So, you tak boleh kata, tak payahlah, kita hidup je lah apa yang ada. Woi, kalau kita kereta, enjin kereta pun kalau tak, kita tak boleh buat, awak rasa kita pandai ke buat kapal terbang? Cannot. <laughs> of course, dari segi pertahanan, ha, kereta kembal semua tu, kita pandai ke buat senjata tu. Kita ada teknologi ke nak buat. So, kalau orang serang Malaysia nak pakai pedang, nak pertahankan Malaysia. Ha, it's very impossible. Banyak benda yang kita perlukan from the outside. Okay, tapi dia mestilah win-win situation. Okay, if for example, eh, saya buat contoh. Okay, ada two country, Malaysia China. Okay, so I'm I'm trying to explain the relationship between Malaysia and China. Although Malaysia ada banyak lagi trading partners yang lain, tapi export dengan import ni adalah two ways, two ways communication. Uh, Malaysia with China, Malaysia with Singapore, Malaysia with uh, Vietnam. Ada uh, two ways communication. Sekarang ni saya nak tengok the relationship international trade between Malaysia and China. Okay, this is my example. Eh? Okay. In Malaysia, okay, we have the situation which is the export is bigger than the import. Meaning that Malaysia banyak jual barang Malaysia ke China. Kita jual uh, palm oil, kita jual petroleum, kita jual macam-macam. Sebab so, Malaysia uh, uh, has lots of Natural resources yang tak ada di negara luar. Sebab kita iklim katulistiwa kan. <coughs> Banyak benda yang kita boleh produce. Yang tidak boleh diproduce. Dekat negara China. So, they buy lots of our product. So, here, we are exporting more of our product to the uh, to China. But, we are not buying their product. Uh, so, what happened there? Our export is more than our import. In China, the opposite will happen. Sebab dia banyak beli barang kita. So, in China, apa yang berlaku dekat negara dia, import dia akan lebih besar daripada export dia. Dari segi uh, hubungan antara dia dengan Malaysia lah. So, this is not a win-win situation. Why? Malaysia, of course, our inflow is much more than our outflow. We have profit. But, the opposite in China. China, outflow dia, akan lagi besar daripada inflow. So, dia akan ada debt, hutang dengan Malaysia. 
so when this debt is too much this situation keep occurring as time goes by makin banyak makin lama makin lama makin 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 banyak dia import barang kita kita tak export okay, sorry kita tak import pun kita tak beli barang dia 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 je yang beli barang uh, buatan Malaysia Malaysia tak beli pun barang China that ni akan accumulate dia akan makin banyak makin banyak and at the end of the day kalau China don't do something the country will go bankrupt ha, tu masalah dia Malaysia is happy sebab kita dapat profit tapi dia yang tak happy this is not a win-win situation China akan rasa Malaysia now is being selfish ha, pentingkan diri sebab Malaysia nak jual barang Malaysia ke China tapi Malaysia tak beli balik pentingkan diri lah tu kan kalau situasi ni berterusan China akan go bank, goes bankrupt. So what will China do? China akan block, ban, sekat, stop doing trade with Malaysia. Kalau dia tak stop, dia akan go bankrupt. China akan cari new trading partners. Sebab sekarang ni tak win-win situation. So, bila China cari new trading partners, apa yang berlaku pada Malaysia? Walaupun kita happy sekejap dengan profit kan? Sekarang ni kita dah portray a bad image towards the world society. Masyarakat dunia akan pandang that Malaysia ni tak bagus jadi trading partners. Tengok apa yang Malaysia buat kat China. China berhutang. Lala sekali China stop doing trade with Malaysia. So, other country will avoid trading with Malaysia. At the end of the day, Malaysia will be in trouble. Kita hasilkan kelapa sawit terbesar di Asia Tenggara. Kita nak export, tapi nobody will like to be our trading partners. So, it's not good. So, the best is make sure it is a win-win situation. The inflow should equal the outflow for both country. Equals to outflow maksudnya the import mesti sama dengan oh sorry inflow is export mesti sama dengan import for both country situation ni mesti sama for both country Barulah kita kata win-win situation. Uh, this is the best situation for both country. This one is bad. Ini tak okey. Uh, yang merah ni tak okey. Dia akan menyebabkan China in trouble. Malaysia happy sekejap. Lepas tu Malaysia portray bad English. Okay. The best is make sure it's win-win situation. Sebab tu lah you tengok dekat Malaysia. Kita ada banyak tengok barangan awak. Pass a case buatan Malaysia, mouse pack, eh buatan Malaysia pula, buatan China, mouse pack buatan China. Bukan Malaysia tak ada teknologi nak buat benda tu. Tapi kita nak win-win situation. Kita nak suruh China beli produk kita, kita mesti beli produk dia. Ha. So, objektif kita to make sure at least export of good is equal to the import. So that BOP balance Nak bagi dia sama sebikit tu memang impossible Tapi janganlah sampai jauh sangat Beza antara export dengan import Okay So sekiranya export is bigger than import It means we will have more inflow Betul lah kan Export kita jual barang kan Inflow of currency Therefore kita akan ada surplus BOP ha, Surplus tu maksudnya lebihan dalam BOP kita Kita ada profit lah ni ha, Equals to profit Okay, this equilibrium, this is this equilibrium sebab dia tak sama. Equilibrium kan bermaksud something yang sama. Kalau kita belajar equilibrium market tu, quantity demand sama dengan quantity supply. Kalau equilibrium in international trade bermaksud export, X equals to M. Ah, tu yang bermaksud equilibrium untuk international trade. Our export must equals to our import. 
ok, kalau tak disequilibrium disequilibrium ni yang kedua, bila M pula terlebih daripada X import kita terlebih daripada export kita menyebabkan defisit uh, dia bukan shortage eh? istilah dia adalah defisit so defisit ni adalah debt lepas tu debt, hutang in BOP sebab outflow of currency to the rest of the world duit kita mengalir keluar ke luar negara so hopefully you faham ok and last sekali adalah equitable distribution of income it means to reduce the income gap between the higher and the lower income group ha, yang ni kita tak nak lah ok so objective negara adalah to make sure equitable make sure everybody in the country has equal rights to get their income to get the uh, to get something inside the country uh, yang tak equitable ni kita boleh tengok ketara dekat India dekat Indonesia the rich is super duper rich the poor is super duper poor the rich, golongan yang rich ni very uh, super duper rich ni cuma minority je, 5% dalam negara je tapi diorang conquer resource dalam negara tu lebih daripada 70% 70% resource dalam negara milik diorang oh, bayang tak so yang selebihnya golongan yang low income, middle income ni dia orang cuma ada hak dalam 30% resource dalam negara so mana cukup kan entahlah dia orang majority tapi dia orang ada milikan untuk sedikit je resource so apa yang berlaku macam yang berlaku dekat India lah kalau you don't have money you orang biasa for example anak orang miskin dilanggar oleh orang kaya bila you report polis dia akan jadi case dia budak tu yang langgar kereta bukan kereta tu yang langgar duit akan menang ha, tu problem dia so dia akan jadi corruption level very high so bila uh, ada income uh, in, uh, inequitable distribution of income tu tak equal eh? orang kaya, conquer belakang orang miskin tak ada apa-apa eh? dia akan menyebabkan disparity in income dan menyebabkan social friction perpecahan tak akan aman lah duduk dalam negara tersebut you give me wonder everybody uh, macam kat Mexico kat Indonesia orang susah-susah sangat dia macam you cuci dia risau dia uh, orang kata tak selamat dia orang ni bila dia orang susah dia orang akan lakukan apa saja possible to get a way to live uh, uh, of living uh, and bring about many problems such as poverty murder and etc so macam mana kerajaan nak buat tu kerajaan nak buat tax policy nak nak buat equitable distribution of income between the, the higher and the lower group tu kerajaan nak buat tax policy higher income group will pay higher tax uh, so kerajaan akan gunakan cukai yang tinggi kepada orang yang berdapatan tinggi so that with that money yang government obtain from them government akan gunakan duit tu untuk buat public facility for the low income bila government uh, got the money tax money ni adalah tujuan dia untuk government provide facilities inside the country so bila the government has the money the government boleh provide public facilities adalah sekolah awam, hospital awam so orang-orang yang tak ada duit ni, dia mampu dapat education and ubah style of living dia taklah selama-lama jadi jadi miskin so kalau kita tengok negara-negara miskin ni yang miskin ni bergenerasi miskin bukan sebab diorang malas belajar ke apa diorang tak ada opportunity to get education education dia satu cara untuk menukar lifestyle seseorang ha, you kena belajar betul-betul ok with education you know how to sustain your lifestyle your, to sustain your livelihood ok and another way is expenditure policies kerajaan akan bagi subsidi transfer payment bagi duit BRIM duit BPN sekarang educational scheme uh, sponsor belajar and etc uh, so that dia boleh apa dekatkan jurang atau yang kaya dengan yang miskin tu ok so that's it the objective so like I mentioned uh, before this yang kat atas sekali tu Okay, kalau kita fail to achieve full employment, kita ada masalah unemployment. So, I already mentioned in this last slide. Uh, 
Five macroeconomic problem is unemployment because we are unable to fulfill full employment. Inflation because we are unable to fulfill the objective of price stability. Slow or no growth because we are unable to fulfill the objective of economic growth. Disequilibrium in international trade because we are unable to fulfill the objective of equilibrium in international trade. Inequitable distribution of income because we are unable to fulfill the objective of equitable distribution of income. Okay, so this chapter is very simple. Just reading saja, tak ada masalah pun. Make sure you faham and know how to explain on your own words. Okay, and then kita akan buat past years dia, chapter 7. Kalau you nampak kat sini, very simple. Dia cuba tanya, every country in the world, ni adalah soal, uh, soalan dia. Sebab ni tak ada calculation, so soalan dia akan masuk bahagian essay saja. Ha, so ini adalah soalan past years dia. Okay, every country in the world is working towards achieving macroeconomic goals. Define macroeconomics. Ha, macroeconomics kita dah belajar tadi kan? Macroeconomics means the uh, the uh, the economics issue as a whole throughout the country. Okay, secara menyeluruh. Explain three macroeconomic goals. So, goals kita belajar lima kan? So, you explain in detail three. Ha, make sure you boleh explain in detail. Okay. And then yang kedua. Uh, what, uh, uh, explain why it is important to achieve full employment and price stability. Uh, make sure you try ni. Sebab kalau you faham ni, you boleh buat assignment you. Kenapa paling penting sebab semua negara untuk fulfill full employment and price stability. This is to avoid unemployment. This is to avoid inflation. Okay, make sure you boleh mengarang. Cuba mengarang. And then, the last question. Okay, bila saya letak sekali tiga ni, maksudnya soalan yang sama, dia keluar sample dan cara tanya je berbeza. Four macroeconomic objective. So, kita ada lima. Pilih mana-mana empat yang paling mudah. Cuba tolong, cuba mengarang. Okay, so that's it. Thank you.